Hi guys, this is Bob, N9KR in Southern Indiana, and we thought we'd make a video uh, today on um, on improving our existing DDS VFO. It's built around the Arduino and a 9850 uh, little modules that you can get on eBay for about five dollars, and an LCD uh, two-line display. And uh, we've had real real good success with a couple of earlier versions of that. Here's one of them here um, that uh, that worked well in our uh, CWQRP homebrew station. They're built using uh, extra junk chassis that we've had some other something else in, and uh, the limit that we've discovered with these guys is that the uh, microprocessor that we're using, the Arduino, is the older uh, AT Mega 328 version, and uh, they don't have enough digital and I/O pins for some of the advanced features that we've built into or attempting to build into the software here to help us control all the functionality uh, inside our. Uh, inside our QRP station, our homebrew station. So, also we thought we'd make it a little prettier, go with a little bit bigger chassis. So we found a, an old uh, MFJ electronic keyer uh, chassis here that we kind of tore the guts out of. And it looks like size-wise and functional functionality-wise it'll be a pretty good uh, uh, chassis for us to use for an improved version of our DDS VFO. We've already got the optical encoder kind of mounted here. It looks like it'll go go well on that side. See it there? there we're currently figuring out how to get the additional push buttons we want on the front to provide some extra functionality. We've got plenty of room on the back for a lot of output uh, jacks. We'll probably put about uh, six or eight of them back there so that we can use some of those digital pins to uh, control various functionality inside the, the QRP uh, station. We've got the same type of LCD modules, these little 16 by 2 display guys here. I think we'll go with blue this time. Here's our DDS uh, control module that uh, you can get on eBay real cheap these days. It's based on an AD9850 uh, processor. And then we're going to go with the uh, the uh, 18 mega uh, 30 or 2560 uh, module, which has a lot more uh, digital and I/O pins. We'll mount that inside this box up off the up off the uh, ground plane there, and uh, have the USB connector out the back, and then. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna use this guy and uh, we're gonna attempt to get some of the mechanical stuff out of the way here and see see what kind of progress we make and then we'll continue to document this along the way and uh, end up with a finished product that I think is gonna be pretty functional. Well, there it is, another bad chassis job as far as cutting out that rectangular hole, but at least we we got it cut out, and um, we got our two holes drilled up here at the top that we're going to use to secure this on the inside with some uh, nylon standoffs, and then we'll use a, one of our bezels around the outside here to make the hole look nice and neat, so all things considered, I guess that's that's not too horrible. We also have some holes drilled here for three of our push buttons. And we got six drill, holes drilled in the back that we're going to enlarge to the proper size for our uh, connectors back there. Okay, so we've done some more work on our little chassis here. We have our uh, AT Mega 2560 mounted here now. Uh, off, it's up off the board on up off the bottom of the chassis on some little nylon standoffs that we that we bought back on the left of, to the left of that over here we have a little AD9850 DDS module also mounted up off the bottom of the chassis with little um, nylon spacers mounted in there on the back side here we installed a number of uh, so far we've got four RCA jacks back here, one, two, three, four, and two BNC connectors. We have our little variable 5K pot that will be used to adjust the uh, contrast on the LCD once we get that installed and set up. Got one more opening over here that I think we're going to put another RCA connector in there. Uh, opening for our USB connector which connects to our laptop for programming this guy. So that's as far as we've got to this point. Okay, so we've uh, got to the point now where we've got our push buttons all installed on the front here. Got our encoder knob on here. We've got our LCD uh, 
display installed. We're using two of the four installation points on the back of this 16x2 module here with some little nylon standoffs to get it positioned the right distance out from the front of the chassis here. Uh, we've got uh, a little bezel that we made up of some, uh, we've shown these in another video, but we use these uh, dollar, star, dollar store paper plates that have a shiny, shiny coating on one side. They're easy to cut and work with and make a pretty good uh, black bezel that you can cut out your holes and rectangles for. Look pretty nice. We're probably going to enhance. This was a first pass, and we'll probably do another one, try and make it a little nicer. The other thing we've added in the back here is a little uh, 7805 uh, voltage regulator back in the back, back here. That that way we can we can provide a uh, anywhere from 7 to 15 volts DC input, and it gets regulated down to 5 volts, which is what the Arduino board needs, and also the uh, the uh, little DDS VFO module over here. Okay. So we're making some progress. We've begun wiring some of the components here in our uh, DDS VFO. We've got the optical encoder wired up here. goes to just a couple of power connections, uh, hot side and ground, and then there's two uh, uh, digital uh, inputs on the Arduino board that we've up there. The DDS module over here, the AD9850, we've got that wired up. Here's our output going over here. There's uh, plus 5 volts going to it, and there's uh, three input pins coming from uh, the Arduino. Uh, there's a load clock and data lines coming in. Um, so we're making progress. All the uh, source code and the instructions and information for building the base version of this guy are available at theladderline.com. That's Ross Keating's website. He's up in New England. He uh, developed this originally back in 2010 and uh, we've built several of these and have made some uh, modifications to the software uh, for our own use, but the, the base the base code will work well for you as a starting point. It's all open source, thanks to Ross. He has uh, a couple of pictorials up there, including this one, which is just a schematic or a rough uh, block diagram of uh, wiring uh, for the Arduino. It's showing in this case we're showing the uh, DDS60, which is how he originally uh, built this unit. But uh, we've since uh, been able to use these cheap uh, DDS uh, AD9850 modules, like this guy right here. That you can get on eBay for about four or five dollars each, and they work great. And there's instructions up there on the website for modifying the uh, code slightly to make those work with this setup. Okay, so we got our wiring all completed on this guy on our new uh, DDS VFO using the Arduino 2560 Mega. And uh, we used uh, a lot of these uh, little jumper wires here, male to male and male to female types. We ended up uh, soldering uh, the ends of, of some connection points like going back to these connectors here. Most of it's push-on and uh, came together pretty well for us but uh, the big surprise happened when we went to uh, fire this up and, and try it out. Uh, as you recall we were using software written by uh, Ross Keating. Great software and it's written for the AT Mega 328. Well this 2560 uh, understandably has a different uh, pin map and uh, um, so not thinking of that ahead of time, we just wired it up the same way as the original and obviously it didn't work. Nothing worked. The LCD didn't work and the, the uh, DDS output didn't work and the encoder didn't work. So we went back to, uh, we did some investigation and uh, and we got that resolved. The so Ross's software uses uh, direct port manipulation to talk to the, uh, to the encoder and the LCD display up here in the DDS module. Uh, for speed enhancement, and it's a nice feature, but uh, he's using uh, port C and port D as defined in the AT Mega 328, and unfortunately the uh, port C and D uh, are, are significantly different as far as the uh, location uh, on the uh, AT Mega 2560, and, and there's some functionality uh, changes as well. Uh, the uh, interrupts that Ross was, were, was using were uh, 0 and 1, which are on digital port 2 and 3 on the 328 on the Omega, AT Mega 328, and uh, that had to change as well. So uh, we were able to do some uh, some digging and some research and some experimenting. We finally figured out uh, how to make the changes uh, to uh, to get the software uh, working correctly on the AT Mega uh, 2560. And uh, once we got that resolved, uh, all the features worked, and uh, uh, we uh, did some bench testing with this. It looks really optimistic, and we're going to go ahead and set this up uh, in our uh, QRP station and verify that uh, everything is as it should be. So while we have the covers off, let's just take a quick look inside. If I can hold the camera steady enough here to get an idea of uh, just kind of a side-by-side -side, some of the differences between the two units. See the one on the left is more of a 
looks like kind of a kludge. Um, the uh, microprocessor itself is the AT Omega 328. It's mounted upside down there, sort of in the center of the screen. And then uh, the AT9850 module is towards the back, also mounted upside down. That's the same as the AD9850 module that we have over on the new unit here, a little neater. And of course, they were using the uh, Funduino version of the Arduino, A, uh, Arduino 2560. Um, uh, we have lots of additional digital and I uh, pins available and analog pins and uh, more memory and uh, just a, a more versatile unit for us to continue to experiment with this guy. Um, one of the differences on this one on the left, and I think we pointed it out in earlier videos, is that module on the far left uh, corner there is a little uh, CP2102. It's a uh, USB interface module so that we can get data in and out of the Arduino itself. Because on this guy, the USB interface is included as part of the uh, Arduino itself, and it's available out the back side there for programming. Look at our output signal on the scope on our new DDS VFO. Pretty much a constant uh, 0.8 to about 1 volt peak to peak in the amplitude on up to about 18 or 20 megahertz, and it starts to drop off somewhat up there after that. It's perfectly uh, functional for our needs here.